Hello and welcome to this Rhino 6 tutorial on matching your model with a photo. So what we're going to do today is something that's very common in um, producing renderings is that you want to take what you have modeled in Rhino. Um, in this case, this is just a, an old project um, that I worked on where we have this unit on the corner and my Rhino model has a bunch of dumb context in here, um, just some generic urban um, infill. And what I want to do is render this image and allow it to perfectly sync up with a photo of the actual site. So if I jump into Photoshop real quick, here is the actual corner that this project would be on. Um, and what I want to do is get my rendering so that when I drop it into here, it feels perfectly seamless and is the right scale and perspective such that I can um, visually uh, create a rendering that allows us to, to read as, as if the product was completely finished. Um, so to do this, we need to do a number of things. Um, we'll start first with what we need to do to the image um, ahead of time and then we'll go to what needs to be uh, done in Rhino. So this is the, my starting image. So this has been slightly manipulated before uh, this started, but I'll kind of explain what's happening here. Um, I created this image by just standing in the corner or in the middle of the street and taking a few photos um, just to get a little bit more of a panorama than that my, my um, camera would allow. I took three photos and stitched them together. And that is simply just using the um, file automate photo merge tool in Photoshop. From this point, I just browse, I selected the three photos that we're trying to stitch together, click OK, and then it does all the work there. And it more or less gave me um, what we see here. I've done a few other things. As you can see, I already cut out the sky to sort of prepare it because I wanted this particular sky. And the day I shot this, uh, this guy was a little bit washed out and kind of boring. Um, the other thing that has been done is I've just I corrected the uh, distortion. So if you you'll probably notice when you bring in the photo merge that these, the the image might be a little bit skewed. Um, all I've done here is uh, pulled over a number of guidelines to some known verticals. You know, things I can see in the project, sides of houses and stuff that I know are generally pretty straight. I'm going to stay away from the poles because those tend to lean a little bit. Um, and if my image was skewed at all, I would come in here and go edit, transform, and uh, skew. And what's likely happened is your image came in looking a little bit more like this, where it's a little bit out of skew. Um, just so to fix that, all I do is just pull my top corners out to correct for any distortion that happened in the photo merge process. What I really want to do is make sure that all my verticals are vertical. So as long as I'm everything that is vertical in my image is vertical, um, when it's done, then we're good. Uh, we don't want anything either. This is going to go back to some old axonometric drawing techniques where all horizontal lines need to be going to a, a vanishing point and all vertical lines need to be 100% vertical. So we can look at some of the clues. Our corner of our little warehouse here is vertical. This house is vertical. All the horizontal lines are going to vanishing points, right? They're, they're kind of off the page, but they're there. So now what I want to do before I bring this into Rhino is I, I want to kind of give myself some guidelines so I can visualize where the building's going to fall. This will make it easier once I go into Rhino. So what I'm going to do here is just draw a bunch of lines to figure out where my vanishing points are and where the edges of my property are. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and draw these now. So what I can see here is if I draw a line at the bottom of this warehouse and just continue it, then I draw a line at the top of that roof. I know that that roof line and this sidewalk line are parallel. So in theory, those should take you back to the vanishing point. Um, on this other side, I can follow the bottom of the warehouse and the top of the warehouse, and that takes me to a vanishing point sort of off the page. Once I have those points, I can start drawing uh, new lines that'll serve as guides. As long as it touches the vanishing point and runs, 
it'll essentially run to this middle vertical and then it'll turn back down. Um, the other important lines that I've added here are on my property line. So this is the far left edge of my property line. I just drew a vertical line here. And then the far right edge of my, I drew a, a, a line there. I'm just using the line tool coming in here and just holding shift to make sure it's straight and just drawing lines. Um, so these are going to be a nice guide for me because what I want to do is I'm going to bring this photo into Rhino and then I'm going to try and align my model to it. So I need to know where the edges are and I need to know where my vanishing points are even if they're off the page. As long as I have enough of these guides I can just sort of get it close enough that it looks like everything is in the right perspective. So what I do now with this is save it as a JPEG. So I can just save this as a JPEG um, to use. So I'll say it's this, my template for aligning view. Click OK. So now I'm going to jump back into Rhino. And so here's my model. Um, here's that street corner. So this is roughly where this was. This photo was taken. I can just get kind of close here. A um, couple things to note for before we get started here. Um, some key things that are going to be to help you get this aligning is making sure you are balancing your... So if I right click, I can rotate around my model. If I hold... Um, shift and right click. That's just a quick way to pan, use the pan tool. So I'm just holding shift, right click, and I can pan to get some really subtle adjustments. If I hold control and right click, then I can zoom and just get really tight little zooms. So I can do that with the center mouse wheel. But if I hold control in my right click, I can get a little more control over it. And it's gonna be a lot of very rotate, pan, zoom. You're going to have to sort of master that shift and control right click just to get this um, worked out. The other thing is that we're going to want to get our lens length to be at a something that's more um, of our sort of distorted reality photo here. So I typically start with something around 24 or 25 um, as a starting point. If I can't quite get it to the line from there, I, I'll. Uh, I'll start lowering that, and that sort of is dependent on how close you are, how distorted, how much um, width you're trying to get in your photo. So now that that is set up to a good, you know, starting point, we can adjust that from there. Um, we know roughly about where this should be. Um, let's import the photo. So we're not going to do this by importing like in a, in a typical way. We actually want to use a different command called wallpaper. So if you just type wallpaper, enter, it'll... So I'll select uh, the, the, the saved view that has our guidelines on there. I'll click open. And when you see this comes in as a wallpaper, you can see that it truly is just a wallpaper. So if I move the model around, um, it doesn't change anything in the background. It just sort of sits frozen back there no matter where I go, it's just there. It's a little disorienting at first, but you'll see it starts to make sense on how we align to it. So what I want to do now is, since I'm going to be trying to get this my little environment to align with this photo and I can't quite see it all, I'm actually going to go to a wireframe view. This allows me to just see the sort of key lines that I'm working with. and those key elements that, are gonna, that I want to focus on are going to be the top ridges or, or the parapet of my building and where it touches the ground and that sidewalk. If I could get all those things plus I touch it on the left and right for my um, scale, then I know that I'll be sort of following all the rules. Um, one thing that you'll probably notice if you're, if you're still set in your perspective viewport is that when you try to start to get things to align, you can see that my um, my verticals are not vertical, right? They're like kind of, oh, you can see it here, they're tilting in. And that's just the way that Rhino 
perspective projection works is that it's a true three-point perspective. So it, it, it's always going to a vanishing point, um, which is sort of how reality is, but you don't ever perceive it that way. Um, so what we want to do is make this match what we did to our, our photo. So if you remember, I said all verticals need to be vertical and all horizontals go to a vanishing point. I'm going to change this to a two-point perspective. So what that does is it locks in my verticals as all vertical and my horizontals are going to the vanishing point. So from here, it's really just a scooching things around game. So the first thing I'm going to do is zoom in and out such that I'm big enough that my right side is touching my property line and my left side is. So that looks like I'm about the right scale. Now I need to sort of play with left and right rotation and up and down rotation to get all of my points to align. And so what I'm looking for here is just um, vanishing point lines. It doesn't need to be perfect, but it needs to all be in the same alignment. So as I'm wiggling and scooching, I'm getting this, it's sort of getting close right here. What I'm looking for in the bottom is right here. You can see I'm following the sidewalk there. I'm a little bit off here on my left side, but it's actually still at least going to the same vanishing point. That's likely just a modeling error that I didn't make my sidewalk as big as it is in reality. Um, all I care about is that I'm going to the same perspective. So this sidewalk is going to the same perspective lines, maybe a little bit off, I'm not quite there yet. Um, up here, my left side's really looks like it's matching this line. Again, this line is just a guideline. I don't need to hit that line exactly. I just need to use it to visually see. And you can see on the right here, it's off, right? This is like, this is going out a little bit wide. So I'm not quite there. I need to rotate it a little bit. And maybe that'll help that other sidewalk. Zoom in. And again, this can be kind of fr frustrating and time consuming, but once you get it, you know, it's right. So I'm going to go to the same version where I know I got it right. Um, and so here again, you can see my right side is following the lines. If I look at some of these other guidelines, it all looks like they're parallel with each other in space. Um, same on the left, my sidewalk again, it's a little bit off here, but it's more or less falling to the same vanishing point. My right sidewalk, a little bit off as well, but you can see it goes all the way out to that vanishing point. And you can see some of my context buildings are roughly aligning with where they are in the photo. And they won't be perfect, and that's because I built the context by sort of just extruding things off Google, but I the reality of the photo is much more accurate. So I'm just trying to get conceptually close. And this is actually pretty good, but again, the, um, the perspective alignment is what's most important. So once you have that, you hit uh, make sure to save that view. So if you go on your drop down upper left, set view, name views, save as, and you can call it photo match. Um, you'll have that view saved. And from here, it's just a matter of rendering out the view. And in the next tutorial, we'll look at bringing that view into Photoshop and sort of the next half of all of this is getting it to blend with the photo. But this is the way to start that process by making sure that your perspective is perfectly matching the photo that it's gonna fall into.